going to invite you to just remain standing so that we're not doing a stand and sit and stand and sit kind of a thing. And just go with me to the book of Psalms, Zabur Unnis, and we'll quickly read there and then we'll take our seats at the end. Psalms 19. Sham, if I could get a little sound on this, I don't have a fold back. Psalms 19, Zabur Unnis. We'll start in verse 7. If you can't find the book of the Psalms, it is the, one of the largest books of the Old Testament. It's before Matthew. And just keep going back to your turning pages and all you see is Psalms on top. You've landed. Amen. Zabur ki kitab uska unnis about Psalms chapter 19. And I'll read and pray one more time for God's blessing on the word that we will break. The law of the Lord is perfect, restoring the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is poor, pure, enlightening the eye. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgment of the Lord are true. They are righteous altogether. They are more desirable than gold. Yes, that much fine gold. Sweeter than the honey and dripping of the honeycomb. Moreover, by them your servant is warned. In keeping them there is great reward. Who can discern his error? Acquit me of hidden faults. Also keep back your servant from presumption, presumptuous sins. Let them not rule over me. Then I will be blameless, and I shall be acquitted of great transgressions. Let the word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Let us pray. Father, we just pray even now that your word would rest in our heart, and your word would wrestle with our heart, and that we would not leave here the same that we came in, that your word would challenge us. It would bring us to the place where we make some decisions today. I thank you for what you have done. I thank you for what you will do. For it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our youth ministry is dismissed for their class. You may be seated. The message that God has put on my heart as I close the series on the Bible today, um, we have been just looking at the Bible from the outside. Today we'll look at it from the inside. For a few weeks, what does the world, what does the scholars, what does archaeology, what does the, the literature charts, and, and those things speak of the Bible. But today we'll see what the Bible says of itself. And moreover, I pray and I long that we leave here with an application and so the subject that is on my heart it is prioritizing our Bible say it with me it's three words prioritizing so I can hear you prioritizing our Bible say it again prioritizing our Bible I think the Urdu translation is Bible ko tarji dena I had it Yes, another score for Google. <clears throat> Prioritizing our Bible. The Word of God says in the book of Revelation, They're blessed. Right? It gives us right there. It says if you read this word and apply it, you are blessed. And so what we're going to do today is look at why it's so crucial for believers to read God's word. <laughs> See, when you got to speak Urdu and Punjabi and English at the same time, <laughs> in an article written in the Christian Post in 2011, January of 2011, there was an article written in the Christian po uh, Post by Catherine Fan. And she writes about the survey she conducted searching what is the top thing Christians do not do. 
ये जो औरत है इसने एक सर्वे किया एंड इन दैट सर्वे शी 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 रोड अबाउट हर स्टडी ऑफ व्हाट इज द वन थिंग वो कौन सी एक चीज है जो मसीही या जो अपने आप को ईमानदार कहते हैं वो नहीं करते it came as no surprise that the number one answer she received during her research and her survey was reading scripture the number one thing that christians do not do is read their bible the number one thing that we do not this not to be proud of yeah nahi oh we are number one we are number one no it's number one in the negative right it's like number one in not reading our bible is what the survey said the number one spiritual exercise or discipline which christian and professing believers do not participate in is reading the bible ye ek rohani exercise ye rohani discipline jis jo masihi ya jo kehte hain ki hum masihi hain jo nahi karte wo ye hai ki hum kalam nahi padhte this is to say yes we do engage in a dialogue about the bible hum bible ke dialogue mein to aate hain ya guftagu karte hain we agree with what the bible is saying if someone else is sharing something about it agar koi aur bible ke bare mein kuch bol raha hai we do agree with it we we are not challenging the bible hum kisi bhi tarah se kalam ko challenge nahi karte we don't miss or over quote the scripture na hi hum kalam ko miss quote karte hain but the one thing that we do not do is we don't pick it up and read it this is not me saying it this is what fan said this is what the author of this article said ke baaki sab kuch hum kalam ke jab guftguen hoti hain ya kalam ki baat cheet hoti hai ya kalam ko quote wo hum sab karne mein theek hai but the one thing that we we refrain from doing the one thing that we try not to do or try not to bring into our discipline is that we don't read the bible and in the same survey the number one reason she finds in her research of why christians are not reading the bible is that we don't have time unhone research kiya ke ek jo cheez jo masihi nahi karte wo ye hai ke wo bible nahi padhte aur usko aur further unhone define kiya ke kyun nahi padhte to ye tha ke hamare paas time nahi hamare paas hamare paas time nahi in this rather short article she shares her conclusion of why christians don't read the bible and i think i presented them here usne teen wajuhat likhi jisse jo arguments thi ya excuses the of why we don't read the bible number 1 they secretly believe it doesn't matter wo bible kyun nahi padhte kyunki shayad wo secretly secretly kya hota hai jasoosi di taur par खुफिया तौर पर वो ये मानते हैं इट्स नॉट रियली इंपॉर्टेंट या प्लीज आई नो दैट आई एम प्रेजेंटिंग समवन एल्स इज रिसर्च टू यू बट आई बिलीव द स्पिरिट ऑफ गॉड इज टॉकिंग टू यू एंड टू मी मैं रिसर्च तो किसी और का प्रेजेंट कर रहा हूं बट समवेयर अलॉन्ग द वे आई थिंक आई एम गन हिट सम ऑफ अस इंक्लूडिंग माई सर वन ऑफ द रीजन वाई पीपल आर नॉट रीडिंग देर बाइबल क्रिश्चन आर नॉट रीडिंग देर बाइबल इज बिकॉज secretly they think it's not important other things are more important going to work is more important making sure i'm taking care of what needs to happen is more important and so what we're saying hala hum keh to nahi rahe lekin hamare attitude mein hamari behavior mein hamare faislo mein ye sahi it is clearly presented that it is not important second thing they would rather rely on professionals to read it and explain it to them hum isliye nahi padhte padri nu kade kaam rakhe hain they like we'll rather let the pastor do it and just explain it to us we'd rather let those people jinko shock hai ye shock ki baat hai bhai sahab it's about you know what you like you know i like football you like bible it doesn't work like that but the second thing she came to is that they would rather rely on professionals to read it and explain it to them and the third reason which i think is perhaps the most relevant for us 
and why we as a church felt the need and the leaders to design a ministry of discipleship and she wrote that they do not have support system but they don't have a system in which they can study God's word they don't have the support and I believe that's where we might be as a church that we we might want to do it but we might need some support we need some accountability we need some thing that will help us get there this was her research and as we sit in God's presence today whether we're here actually in person or you're watching online we must our, ask ourselves is this true of me is this true of me that this is something that I just do not do this is the number one thing as a Christian I do not do I pray I fast I come to church I talk Christian I do all of the things Christians are supposed to do this is just the one thing that I do not do and if that is true for you then I believe that God allowed you to sit here today in his presence to hear me amen even as we read in the beginning the word of the Lord is perfect the word of the Lord say it with me is perfect it's perfect we looked at this in the past two weeks. It's accurate, it's flawless, it's authentic, and it has stood every test. It restores the soul. Is your soul exhausted? It restores the soul. The Bible is telling us that this word, ye jo ka kalam hai, ye hame taro taza karta hai. Are you exhausted? And what I mean by that is not, ke are you rested? Ke aapne aat gente ya chhe gente bed bister ke upar aram kiya hai. You could go to sleep and still wake up exhausted because it's not your body that is in need of rest. It is your soul that is in need of refreshing. And the Bible is telling us that it is this word of God that will refresh us, that will rejuvenate us, that would revive us once again. It would bring peace to us. It would recharge and refresh the peace in our soul. The Bible says that it is sure, making wise the simple. This book removes a lot of complications. A lot of complications. A lot of complications. This word of the Lord makes them simple. It is right. It brings a rejoicing to the heart. The commandment of the Lord are pure. There's no agenda in it. There's no deception in the word of God. It's me koi agenda. Brainwashing karne ka koi agenda nahi hai. Aapko baagi banane ka koi agenda nahi hai. Aapko jangi ya aise. It's not about that. The word of God is pure. It is pure. Enlighten the eyes. And in the time that we have today, loved ones, I want us to lay a few reasons of why we should read, study, and memorize scripture. Three things why we should be doing this. study karna. What's study in, in Urdu? Study, right? Study. Just study karan gamunda, right? Like read, study, and memorize scripture. Why? And I have that question for us to try to navigate through today. Why we should read, study, and memorize scripture. Let's go. The very first thing if you're taking notes is why we should read, study, and memorize scripture. It's the word of God. It is the word of God. It's the word of God. It's the word of God. Second Timothy 3.16. All scripture is inspired by God. In the new uh, NIV translation it says it's all God breathed. This is the breath of God that was given to us. Please think of that for a moment. It is the word of God. And the Bible tells us it's for teaching. It's for teaching. It's for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness. So that the man of God may be adequate, equipped for every good thing. The word of God tells of itself is that this word of the Lord is the breathed word of God. Or hamari zindgi ke liye, taaleem ke liye, seekhne ke liye, how to live an effective, adequate life 
it comes from this because this is the word of God. We studied this in the past few weeks. This is not some folk tales that have passed down through time. Is cheese go up near the hand, Miss Nicole DJ, or I got to go up to your cat. I have Unco is Kahiki Galate. These weren't stories of the Jews that came down in time. Ye Nahita get Dadene up in a beteco, betene up in a beteco, or Uske betene, Uske beteco. These weren't folk tales that were coming down in time. This is not a commentary or opinion of religious people. Ye can see Mazabi Logonki commentary nahi hai. The signature of God Almighty is in every book, it's in every uh, every page, it's in every paragraph, it's in every sentence, it's in every period, in every comma. Is kitab me lika hua har ek cheese jo hai po hudaman ki sansi. Everything in this is the breath of God. The Holy Spirit is the author and the interpreter of this book. This is God breathed. So the number one reason why we should be anxious to study, read, and memorize this is, this is the Word of God. Could you imagine the Word of God? This isn't someone's notebook that we get, we're looking at secretly. This is God's Word. How much more emphasis should we have towards this the second thing it is the unchanging truth in an ever-changing world this book it don't change people change people's ideas change the world is constantly changing you agree zindagi everything is constantly changing we are constantly changing we're changing physically all the time some of us not in the directions we want to, but we do change. We're changing intellectually all the time. Hamari jo hikmat hai, ya hamara jo knowledge hai, wo usme azafa hota rehta hai. Things are constantly changing. Technology is constantly changing. Science that we go to all the time. Yes, science hai. Iske upar humne bro. Trust the science. Science is constantly changing. Everything in the world is constantly changing except this. This does not change. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word will never pass away. 1 Peter 1, 24 and 25. For all people are like grass. All of their glory is like flower of the field. The grass withers, the flowers fall. But the word of the Lord endures, say it, forever. It endures forever. The third thing, it is essential for our living. It's essential. See, the world system, there are essential things you need. Hareko, gari, ne gari, ne, sorry. Kapra, roti. Or makan, right? Here we go. Kapura, roti, or makan. The essentials, right? That's like what Bhutto is selling us, right? All the time, right? You all remember that, right? They're always selling us. The politicians are selling us roti, right? Kapura, makan. They want to sell this to you. You need a roof to live under. You need food to eat. And you need clothes. But Jesus, the Son of God, the all-righteous one came into the world and says, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of my mouth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need roti. Yes, yes. Roti chahiye. Kanyon ko kam, kanyon ko zyada. Right? Kanyon ko roti ke saath bhi kuch chahiye. Right? But Jesus is like, you need bread? You need it. But more than that, you need my word. He's like, you could skip a meal. You can't skip the word. You can skip the meal. You can't skip my word. We need the word of God so we can live biblically. We need the word of God so that we can have a biblical worldview. We need the word of God so our interpretation of what is normal is defined biblically. We need the word of God so that we can biblically have godly values. We need the word of God so that we can govern, manage ourselves and our relationship according to the book. Jesus is bringing to our attention that yes, you need bread to survive, but you need the word of God even more. You need the bread to survive, but what about everything else? 
roti khane ke baad kya how you deal with your wife it's in here how you deal with your children it's in here how you view the politics of today it's in here how you view how the world should be and how it operates it's in here sirf roti kha ke to humne is duniya mein sona nahi na loved ones we got to do everything else in this world and for that we need the word of god for everything we need the word of god fourth thing now if i'm moving too fast keep up fourth thing first it is the word of god for us ye khudaamand ka it is the word of god second it's unchanging truth in an ever changing world third it's essential for our living fourth it keeps us from keeps us from oh no 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 pastor i keep myself from sinning main apne aap ko guna se rokta hu Let me ask your spouse, let me ask your child, let me ask your brother or your sister, that ain't the truth. But the word of God keeps us from sinning. David writes in Psalms 119:11, "Your words I have treasured, I have hidden, I have stored as of great importance so that I may not sin." Tere kalam ko maine apne dil mein chupa liya. And he's speaking in the context. Yeah, nee, that I have hidden such things that I can't find myself in it. Right? Sometimes we hide things that we can't find. Right? You know, you know, you know what I'm talking about. We we hide things and we can't find them. Oh, it's not that much. We hide things. Right? I'm not coming at the way men do that too. Men do that too, right? <laughs> right? But this is the same. That I have treasured. I have hidden. I have stored. 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 I have hidden. ये सोने से चांदी से भी ज्यादा कीमती है तेरा कलाम इट इज सो सो मच मोर प्रेशियस दैट आई हैव स्टोर्ड इट आई हैव हिडन इट आई हैव सिक्योर्ड इट इन माय हार्ट सो दैट आई वुड नॉट सिन अगेंस्ट यू देयर आर मेनी हैबिट्स वी हैव अडॉप्टेड इन आवर लाइफस्टाइल्स विदाउट लुकिंग एट द स्क्रिप्चर्स टू सी इफ गॉड इज फॉर इट और नॉट हमारी जिंदगी में बहुत सारी आदतें हम अपने इसको नॉर्मल बना लिया होता है छोटा झूठ ठीक है बड़ा झूठ नहीं यू नो वी मेड समथिंग सो नॉर्मल इन आवर लाइफ बिकॉज वी हैव रियली चेक गॉड्स वर्ड देर सो मेनी रिलेशनशिप वी हैव इन्वॉल्व आर सेल्व इन एंड वी आर वी आर ओके विद विदाउट सींग इफ गॉड अप्रूव इन हिज वर्ड देर सो मेनी रिलीजियस डोंट लेस नॉट लुक एट द सिंस एंड द नॉट सिंस देर आर सो मेनी रिलीजियस प्रैक्टिस एंड ट्रेडिशन वी हैव सेट अप without looking at the scripture to see if god instructed those or not bahut dafa bahut zyada mazhabi bhi baatein humne banayi rakhi hui hain aur kalam mein dekha hi nahi ki ye theek bhi hai ke nahi we need the word of god david said i've hidden it i've read it i've memorized it i stored it so when temptation comes when the moment comes when i have to make a decision i'm able to make an informed one because i have given room to your word in my heart ye daud keh raha hai ke tere kalam ko maine dil mein rakh liya ke jab azmaish aaye jab aisi ghadi aaye jab maine faisla karna hai tera kalam already mere dil ke andar hai and according to that i can say yes my god is for me or no my god is not and i'll make the decision amen dallas willard said this bible memorization is absolutely fundamental to spiritual formation If I had to choose between all the disciplines of spiritual life, I would choose Bible memorization because it is a fundamental way of filling our minds with what I need. Chuck Swindoll said, "I know of no other simple practice in the Christian life more rewarding practically speaking than memorizing scripture. No other single exercise pays greater spiritual dividends." your prayer life will be strengthened your witnessing will be sharper and much more effective your attitude and outlook will begin to change your mind will become alert and observant your confidence and assurance will be enhanced your faith will be solidified from what from just remembering the scripture your iman aapka iman jo hai wo mazboot hoga there are christians walking around that have no spiritual convictions they don't have any convictions 
Why do we do what we do? Have no conviction for it. Because the word of God is not in their heart. They don't have the, I'm so, this is my conviction. There's no conviction in their life. There's no power in their testimony. There is no compassion in their heart. Because the word of God is missing. It's the word of God for us. It's the unchanging truth in an ever-changing world. It's essential for our living. It keeps us from sinning. And the last thing that is on my list, and I can go on, but I only chose five, so it's easy to remember. The last is, it gives us daily victory, daily triumph over Satan. Daily, we get victory over the devil. Daily. You're like, but I don't really need victory over the devil daily. Oh, yeah, you do. Yeah, I don't really engage in a devil's fight every day. You don't, but he does. Matthew 4, 4, 7, and 10. Matthi chotha baap uski chothi satvi dasvi aayad. Hamare khudawan yesu masi. My Lord and Savior, your Lord and Savior, Jesus, the lover of your soul, the son of David, the everlasting king, said these beautiful words. It is written. Wo hud khudawan ka kalam tha. Wo hi kalam hai. But still he said, it is written. It is written. The devil came at him with scripture. Kalam hi lekar shaitan Yesu Masi ke piche aur Yesu ne kaha listen listen. This is written. He said yeah but the Bible said this this is. He said but this is written. Amen. Ephesians six seventeen. If you turn about soul vi and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God which is the Word of God. Or Ruki Talwar ko lelo, jo khudawan ka kalam hai, jo khudawan ka kalam hai. The devil is after you. I know you hear a lot of bad news on TV these days, but I've got some news too. The devil is after you. The devil is coming after your health. He's coming after your family. He's coming after your peace. He's coming after you. This is not because he has a personal quarrel with you. It is because he has a war against God. No. He comes after you because he's in war with the God that you serve. When he came after Adam and Eve, he had no pick with them. They didn't own anything. They were gardeners. But the devil came after them. Why? Because his war wasn't with them. It was against the God whom they loved. And so when the devil is coming after you, when the devil is coming to destroy you, when the devil is coming after your family, when the devil is it's got nothing personally to do with you, it's got everything to do with the fact that he's in war with your God. And so he has a little minion out. This ain't my subject, but I need you to understand that the victory is in this word. He's got a little agents going around. What are they there for? Just to mess with you. Just to make your life miserable. Just to come after you with doubts and fears and questions of who God is. But the victory that God has given to you, you'll find it right here in His book. Amen. Get a hold of your weapon, which is the Word of God, and stand firm on it. Prioritize your Bible. Prioritize your Bible. You're like, my family is under attack, pastor. Prioritize your weapon. My health is under attack, pastor. Prioritize your weapon. I'm making bad decision after bad decision after bad decision. Prioritize your Bible. Let me end by saying these words for this Bible. 
I'm going to end by just talking about this Bible. The Bible is the living word of the living God who has in his infinite wisdom created and sustained the universe. He has magnified his word higher than all of his name. The Bible is more profitable than silver and yields better return than gold. The Bible is the absolute truth and all other truth is measured by it. The Bible is a seed that once it is sown, it is bound to bear fruit. The bread of life is this book for our spiritual life. It is sweeter than honey. It is a mirror through which we see our truest nature and our condition. It is a hammer which will break the hardest of hearts and the firmest of convictions. It is sharper than a double-edged sword that separates bone and marrow. It is a consuming fire that consumes all unrighteousness and purifies and strengthens the faith. It is a lamp onto our feet. It is a light onto our path. It reveals darkness in areas that we do not even know are dark. Bible is a gift given to mankind from the Lord as a treasure to seek out and the meanings of our life. All scripture is God breathed. It is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, training for righteousness. No scripture has ever been made up by the act of human will. But men moved by the Spirit of God wrote it. God spoke through the prophets, then through the apostles. In 1500 years, three continents, Africa, Asia, Europe, from Moses all the way till the apostle John. 40 different people God chose to write His word. Amongst them were shepherds, priests, scribes, songwriters, farmers, kings, government officials, scholars and physicians, their names, their situations, their locations, all different, yet all of their books, only one central message without any contradiction revealed that this Bible is the grand masterpiece of God. Thousands of prophecies of the Bibles have been fulfilled in length in history and still continue. This reveals that God of this Bible is not only aware of the universe past, present, and future, but he has authority to hold it in all of his seasons. The Bible is read, preached in more languages than any other book in the world, yet the book has gone through more trials and examinations than any other. In every season and era, the opposers of this Bible try to discredit its accuracy, its reliability, its authority. Yet this book over and over stood the test, proving its supremacy over all. Those who opposed it themselves were wiped away, yet the word of God remains the same and unchanged. Though many stood to say that the word of God has changed, it has never lost its authority, its authenticity, yet the secrets that were buried in the earth in its perfect time gave up the truth and we found the most manuscripts, scrolls, fragments, and books of this very book. There are no other books in the world that have been authenticated by so many manuscripts than this. In the last 3,500 years, rulers and men and women of power came and made every effort to oppose the Word of God. Those who dedicated their lives to this book, they were persecuted, put in jails, thrown before animals, thrown in the fiery pits, burned with hot oils, even crucified. All man and dominion and demonic powers have been used to wipe this book from existence. Yet, this book remains the same in its power, in its supremacy, and in its authority. Those who attempted to wipe this book out themselves have been wiped out. And those who have dared to say that this book has changed have come to the truth that this book has never changed. It will never change. The only thing this book has ever done is change anyone who has dared to go into it. They have found the creator. They have found the one they love. They have found Jesus, the author and finisher of their faith. They have found truth and reality. They have found Jesus.
Listen, before I end, do me a favor, stand to your feet. Every person in this place, stand to your feet. If you got a Bible in your hand, just look at your Bible, hold it near, and give God an honor and praise for this book. Just stand at your feet and just give God a praise for this book. This book is worthy. This book is God's breath. This book has never changed. This book is still changing lives. This book is our bread. This book is our bread. That's our book.